self. Uh, Jim Carrey is gone, actually never existed, and I know that now. So I'm able to take gigantic chances with this thing that... I'm sick and tired of the secrets and the lies. I'm here tonight to blow the lid off it, to be the whistleblower. It is the secret symbol of the Lumina. It, for years now, talk show hosts, people on television, people in sitcoms have been hired by the government to distract you, to make you laugh, make you happy and docile so you don't know what's really going on. Hollywood is a land of glitz, glam, and a whole lot of secrets. From A-list scandals to those wild, elite-only parties, there's always something bubbling under the surface. And who better to spill the tea than Jim Carrey? So he strives to, to just stay on what got him there. Right. You know, knowledge of his family, where right. he grew up. Right. You know, just, just all of that stuff that counts. Yep, the comedy king has been dropping some serious truth bombs about the shady side of Tinseltown. But here's the kicker. Jim's not just talking, he's paying the price. The Hollywood powers that be aren't too happy with him. And let's just say he's been getting the cold shoulder big time. Cancel culture is alive and well, and it seems like Jim might be the next one on the chopping block. So why is Jim Carrey in hot water? Well, he's really pushed the envelope, calling out the shady side of Hollywood in a big way. Carrey's been dropping some serious hints, even throwing around wild theories about the Illuminati pulling the strings and scripting our every move. Some of his fans are convinced that after he started speaking out, the industry hit back hard, basically forcing him into an early retirement and pushing him out of the spotlight. Let's be real, Jim Carrey has always been a bit of an enigma with his eccentric moments and all. But now with all this Illuminati talk, it's like he's trying to pull back the curtain on what's really happening behind the scenes. And it seems like Hollywood is not too thrilled about it. The buzz around Jim Carrey's sudden retreat from the spotlight has his friends seriously concerned. Once the life of the party, Carrey now seems to be living in self-imposed isolation, a far cry from the vibrant persona everyone knew. Ever since he stepped away from Hollywood in 2022 to focus on his art, he's been keeping a low profile and word is, he looks like a shadow of his former self. It's got people wondering if this drastic change is a sign of something deeper going on behind the scenes. Say, you know, we're important. And you're yeah. supposed to say, it's all gonna be all right. And you're supposed to say uh, that, you know, whatever you dream can- The concerns about Jim Carrey's well-being stem from his decision to step away from his Hollywood career as an actor comedian and focus on pursuing art. In March 2022, the Ace Ventura star disclosed to Access Hollywood that he was probably retiring from acting. Carrie explained, well, I'm retiring, yeah, probably. I'm being fairly serious, it depends. If the Angels bring some sort of script that's written in gold ink that says to me that it's going to be really important for people to see, I might continue down the road, but I'm taking a break. He further expressed, I feel like and this is something you might never hear another celebrity say as long as time exists. I have enough. I've done enough. I am enough. This shift in focus towards personal fulfillment through artistic endeavors seems to have prompted concern among his friends about his well-being and lifestyle. And Tommy Davidson has also talked about Jim recently. Tommy Davidson, the well-known American comedian who's been around for ages, recently appeared as a guest on Mike Tyson's podcast, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. In an episode, Davidson joined Tyson and co-host DJ Woo Kid to chat about a bunch of topics. Tyson shared some wild boxing stories, while Davidson spilled the beans on his experiences with fellow comedians. During their chat, Davidson even revealed who he thinks is the craziest comedian in the game. There were moments when both Tyson and Davidson got curious about each other's professions. Davidson used this episode as a chance to get to know Tyson better, asking him about his opinions on many classic boxers. During the podcast, co-host DJ Wu Kid asked Davidson who he thought was the craziest comedian in the business. Kid predicted it might be Jamie Foxx. Davidson pondered the question for a moment before finally revealing the name of the comedian he had in mind. He said, Oh, I don't know if there was a crazy one. I think the crazy one was Jim Carrey. At that point, Tyson jumped in and shared his thoughts on Carrey, saying, He's awesome. Davidson went on to explain how Jim Carrey can actually teach you how far you can take one joke. Because of this, many people refused to work alongside him in sketches. Davidson then elaborated on Carrey's unique work process and approach to comedy. Nevertheless, Davidson stood up to find some space in front of the couch where he could enact Carrey's style. He moved near Mike Tyson and acted out the entire scene, narrating everything that happened on the filming set while using his body to illustrate. Davidson said, 
He's supposed to fall on the ground for a second and get up, and I'm supposed to hit him with sutures, you know, right? So I'd say the line, right? And so he falls, right? Back, right? And he's on the ground, right? Davidson then started shaking on the ground, mimicking Carrie's flamboyant body language that he often uses to create humor. He explained how Carrie kept repeating this act at least five, six times, and no one could stop laughing. Well, this is not the only time he spoke about Jim. Recently on Club Shay Shay's podcast, he talked about why he is stepping away from the industry. Tommy shared his perspective on Jim Carrey's absence from the public eye. According to Tommy, Jim had achieved great success with films like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, The Mask, and The Truman Show. But recently, he had focused on personal growth and becoming a better person. Jim, a close friend of Tommy's, recognized the importance of inner development and non-materialistic accomplishments, such as being a loving son and a good person. Tommy then recalled memories of his own upbringing and how his mother's teachings about giving and gratitude had shaped his understanding of success. The kind of woman that would like, you know, we was on welfare. Right. You know, and, and um, you know, you know, we coming up, we coming up the stairs with groceries. Jim Carrey's journey in the entertainment industry has indeed been marked by both success and personal challenges. Despite his fame and acclaim for comedic roles in films like Liar Liar, Bruce Almighty, The Mask, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Dumb and Dumber, and The Cable Guy, he has faced difficulties throughout his career. Don't pick up hitchhikers, but I'm gonna go with my instinct on this one. Saddle up, partner. Carrie has showcased his versatility by also taking on serious roles, receiving praise for his performance in films like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, where he starred alongside Kate Winslet. Early in his career, Carrie faced the hardships of the industry, working under the guidance of popular comedian Rodney Dangerfield, who played a pivotal role in helping him explore the world of comedy and realize his potential. His climb to superstardom during the 1990s included notable work on the TV show In Living Color. Said to him, you have the perfect persona, the perfect comedic persona. I mean, I have, you know, you know, I'm cheap and all this, but the no respect thing gets to the core. When Jim Carrey embarked on his journey into the entertainment industry, he quickly realized the formidable challenges that lay ahead. Chronicled by the New York Times, the actor and comedian faced a protracted and arduous struggle to ascend to stardom. Over nearly a decade, he dedicated himself to performing comedic acts wherever he could, striving to be recognized and taken seriously in the industry. In candid reflections, Carrie shared, For years, I used to drive up to Mulholland Drive every night and look at the city and sit and imagine myself with all this money and being sought after. Contrary to a desire for material wealth, his primary aspiration was excellence in his craft. Recalling a pivotal moment at the age of 15 when his father secured him a gig at a Toronto comedy club, Carrie acknowledged facing initial failure, getting booed off the stage in a polyester suit that clashed with the crowd's preferences. Undeterred, he made a comeback two years later with a more authentic performance, abandoning the suit for a messy-haired, relatable approach. At the age of 19, Carey shifted his focus to Los Angeles, tirelessly honing his skills until catching the attention of industry heavyweights such as Sam Kinison and Rodney Dangerfield, eventually securing coveted television roles. Jim Carey's journey to success was marked by formidable challenges and numerous rejections in his pursuit of a career in the entertainment industry. The hurdles he faced were evident in instances such as his attempt to join Saturday Night Live SNL, where he encountered immediate rejection. According to Insider, Carey's audition tape for SNL never even made it to the executive producer, Lorne Michaels. Michaels, in a statement to Vanity Fair, confirmed that he never had the chance to personally review Carey's audition tape. He explained, Somebody who was there said, I don't think Lorne would like it, and they were probably wrong, but it doesn't matter. Or maybe they were right. Who knows? No one gets it all right. Thankfully, Carey became successful nonetheless. He harbored no ill feelings against the show or its makers, and he has hosted SNL three times and was also a part of the show's 40th anniversary episode in 2015. Enjoy the reunion, you know? Can you really enjoy a reunion? <laughs> Come on. You are so crazy, Jim Carrey! <laughs> Even as he was starting to make his mark in Hollywood, Jim Carrey had to learn to live with a massive sense of personal loss. He lost both his parents in a relatively short span of time, his mother in 1991 and his father in 1994. Carrey revealed in 2014 that his father indirectly helped him follow his dreams. 
Carrie's father was immensely talented and could have shown in the entertainment industry but was too afraid to take that risk. So many of us chose our path out of fear disguised as practicality, Carrie explained, via ABC News. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that was possible for him. So he made a conservative choice and instead, he got a job as an accountant. Years later, his father faced a critical juncture when he lost his job, compelling him to reassess his options. Jim Carrey reflects on this period as a valuable lesson, realizing that even seemingly secure choices can lead to failure. He emphasizes the importance of embracing failure while pursuing one's true passions. For Carrie, that meant pursuing acting and comedy, a decision rooted in genuine love for the craft. Moreover, Jim Carrey is no stranger to battling mental illness. His characters on screen are known for making people laugh, but the actor has privately fought depression for a long time, seeking professional help to cope with his symptoms. Carrie spoke about his journey in 2004 in a conversation on 60 Minutes. I was on Prozac for a long time. It may have helped me out of a jam for a little bit, but people stay on it forever. I had to get off at a certain point because I realized that, you know, everything's just okay," Carrie said. Despite being an incredibly talented, versatile actor, it would be fair to say that Jim Carrey has seen his fair share of ups and downs in his career. Acting has definitely taken a backseat over the last few years, but Carrey hasn't forgotten his love for the craft. This is not it. He has also called out Will Smith and Chris Rock after that famous Oscar scandal. It all started during the 94th Academy Awards. Jim Carrey didn't mince words when he threw shade at the whole debacle with Will Smith and Chris Rock at the Oscars. When he was out there promoting Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Carrey straight up told Gail King on CBS that he was totally disgusted by the whole scene at the 2022 Oscars. You know, when Smith slapped Rock for cracking a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith's haircut considering she deals with alopecia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked out. Yeah, Carrie wasn't having any of it. After Smith unleashed that outburst at Chris Rock, yelling to keep his wife's name out of his mouth, he still walks away with the Best Actor Award for King Richard. For Jim Carrey, that was enough to stop holding back on his thoughts. He straight up said he felt sick seeing everyone giving Smith a standing ovation after that mess. I was sickened. I was sickened by the standing ovation. Carrey didn't hesitate, calling Hollywood out for being spineless and suggesting they've lost their edge. It would appear that the actor saw that action as confirming earlier suspicions that Will Smith's rise might be because of things he had done to get there. And that is likely why he is still being protected. If not for that protection, Carrey thinks Smith should have been booted out of the Oscars then and there for his slap-happy moment. I don't have the right to, to walk up on stage and smack somebody in the face because they said words. Then King pointed out that Chris Rock chose not to involve the authorities in the matter. But Carrey asserted that this decision was solely because the comedian preferred to avoid the trouble. I want the hassle. I, I'd have, I'd have uh, for, announced this morning that I was suing Will for $200 million because that video is going to be there forever. It's going to be ubiquitous. Many folks are wondering if Will Smith's alleged protectors are behind all this trouble. A lot of people think Chris Rock didn't sue Will because of the supposed power Will holds in Hollywood, which lets him do whatever he wants. The rumor mill suggests that Will got this power by doing some pretty shady stuff, things you'd rather not know about. For a while now, accusations have been flying around that Will took part in certain rituals for power, including some involving gay activities. Even Jaguar Wright has talked about it herself. They're both bisexual, they do weird things in their house, and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them and their mental. If it were just Jaguar Wright, we might brush it off as another wild claim. But as we saw from the clip at the beginning, even someone close to Will Smith, his former assistant and friend, Bilal, has come forward with even more damning details. That I, one I walked in on. Who'd you walk in on? Him and Dwayne Martin. Okay. Hollywood is the hurry up and, and, and wait game. Perhaps that's why Jada decided to stay away from him. Just in case you don't know yet, Jada Pinkett Smith recently revealed the difficulties within her marriage to Will Smith. In a preview for an NBC News and Today show special tied to her upcoming memoir, Worthy, the Set It Off star shared that she and Will Smith have been residing apart since 2016, despite maintaining a united front in public appearances. In the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been 
I made a promise that there will never be. The speculations began to intensify in 2016 due to a well-known incident during the Oscars. In that year, Chris Rock famously roasted Jada Pinkett Smith in his monologue. According to Rock, Jada had approached him to step down from hosting the Oscars that year because her husband, Will Smith, had not received a Best Actor nomination for his role in the film Concussion. Jada's mad her man, Will, was not nominated for Concussion. I get it. I get it. Tell the truth. I get it. I get it. You get mad. She said, it's, it's not fair. And if you believe the revelations end there, think again. There are claims circulating that Jada and Will have been organizing unconventional gatherings at their residence, involving much younger men. Jaguar Wright even went on to divulge sensitive information, suggesting that she has witnessed young men leaving their premises in a state of astonishment. Contrary to the perception of Will Smith merely being a typical father expressing affection by giving his son, Jaden Smith, a gentle peck on the cheek, their dynamic transcends conventional norms. The duo's displays of affection have extended to a level that transcends the ordinary. On various occasions, Will has been observed planting kisses on Jaden's lips. While some might readily dismiss it as innocent paternal love, there are those who are beginning to raise questioning eyebrows. Speculations have arisen suggesting that these actions might signify more complex undertones beyond just affectionate bonding. Shit we saw on Red Table Talk. Oh, that, that was that was G. That was G-rated. That was that was G-rated shit. What I will say that I do know about the Smiths. The public reaction to Will Smith's affectionate behavior even prompted discomfort among his fans. Many individuals criticized him for seemingly making his son, Jaden, uneasy by frequently planting kisses on his lips. Despite the growing scrutiny, Will consistently refuted any insinuations of impropriety, maintaining his denial of any discomfort caused to Jaden by these gestures. Rumors are in circulation regarding Will and his wife Jada, who allegedly host lavish gatherings at their home, often attended by younger male guests. These events, as revealed by the outspoken Jaguar Wright, have been suggested to explore non-traditional boundaries. Some individuals even assert that they have personally observed young men leaving the Smith residence, appearing agitated. The echoes of their distressing cries reportedly pierce through the night air, adding to the mysterious aura surrounding these gatherings. Honey, Overbrook was not built to be able to maintain the swag of a Baltimore chick. That is true. Delving into the origins of these extraordinary and unorthodox events, it seems that Will might have drawn inspiration from none other than the revered maestro, Quincy Jones. This iconic music producer and musician boasts a storied career spanning decades, during which he has been privy to a myriad of experiences within the industry. Remarkably, he has not hesitated to unveil the hidden aspects and missteps of several celebrity associates. In a moment that startled many, Quincy Jones confided in an interview with Vulture magazine, laying bare the unexpected truth that individuals such as James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, and Marvin Gaye were queer. Here's what he had to say about Marlon Brando. He was the most charming MF you ever met. He'd F anything, anything. He'd F a mailbox. James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye. Following Quincy Jones' contentious statements, a prominent YouTuber raised their voice, alleging that Quincy himself identifies as bias. Expressing strong disapproval of Quincy's inappropriate comments, the YouTuber pondered whether he was an appropriate individual to divulge anyone else's gender inclinations, given the nature of his own revelations. Quincy Jones, if you always tell the truth, well, tell me this. Are you bisexual? However, the saga doesn't conclude there. The YouTuber took their stance a step further, asserting that they possessed a friend with connections in Hollywood, some of which involved interactions with none other than Quincy Jones himself. Friend who is really attractive and gay, guess what? You learn a lot of things about the men in Hollywood. Alleg Reports have emerged, alleging that Quincy had engaged in a series of intimate liaisons with individuals, even when he was 70 years old. These allegations insinuate that Quincy had kept his interest in the same gender hidden for many years and might have held a role as a guardian of sorts for gay men within the realm of the entertainment industry. Have you ever had sex with a man? Multiple times. Quincy Jones, celebrated for his pivotal role in shaping the trajectories of several black artists' careers, has also been the subject of allegations linking him to various cults and groups, as claimed by conspiracy theorist Professor Griff. 
Griff accused Quincy of involvement in Hollywood S rings. Moreover, the person making these assertions affirmed that during Tupac's introduction to the Hollywood scene, there were purported rituals and contrived scenarios orchestrated by Quincy, which Tupac was allegedly coerced into partaking in. The individual even substantiated rumors that Quincy had allegedly made advances towards Tupac, attempting to persuade him to engage in intimate activities. While there hasn't been any direct confirmation about Will Smith's purported S engagement with any of these individuals, the persistent conversations surrounding this subject underscore its notable presence within public discourse. Moreover, Kerry suggested that when he slapped Chris, it was his inner frustration. He said, The slap came out of nowhere because Will has something going on inside him that's frustrated. I wish him the best. I have nothing against Will Smith. He's done great things, but that was not a good moment. It cast a shadow over everyone's shining moment last night. It was a selfish moment. Carrie revelation attracted the audience and one of them said, It all makes sense because if their marriage has been done for the past 10, 15 years, then him being gay might be a reason why, and she knows she has to protect the bag, so she's definitely not going to say anything during those times, but now she's kind of hinting it because she knows she still wants that bag for the future, so she doesn't want to mess that up. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.